Joining me now is the MMA bantamweight world champion competing for a kickboxing title at One Fight Night 16 on November the 3rd. He is the face of one championship, Fabricio Andrade. How are you doing today, sir? I'm very good, thank you. <laughs> hey, that's good stuff. So you, you're, you're the face of one championship, is that right? I saw that this morning. Tell me everything about this. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's my my goal is is to be the the face. Hey, that is absolutely awesome, and I want to say congratulations on the knockout win over John Lineker. It, I mean, the two, uh, the first one, whatever, like you were winning that matchup. The second one was a a masterclass. How did it feel getting in there and getting the W? Yeah, the second fight was a very tough fight. He had a different strategy come in. He come really strong. And um, I had like to to draw that one deep in, and but felt really good after after I beat him and become world champion. That was a really good feeling, especially after a fight like that. Oh man, and you looked amazing in there. Um, I, I I know you have a ton of experience in kickboxing. You were competing in Kunlun and WLF before, and you were making waves in that organization. Uh, how do you remember your time competing in WLF kickboxing? Man, actually, like when I think, it feels like uh, it was like yesterday. You know, uh, uh, it's been like really fast. My my career in one championship is going like really fast. I get I have like uh, fights after fights. You know, and in that time as well, when I was fighting China, I was fighting like almost every month. So it feels like everything went through like really fast. And after like uh, I I got like this fight for kickboxing i start to watch some of my old videos you know and everything start to connect back on my head so i feel like uh i'm i'm a kickboxer back already you know oh man and i can see it too in your fight style is very clear now let's say you pick up the w and walk away with the kickboxing world title do you want to spend more time in mma and or more time in kickboxing let's say the pay is the same don't worry about that kickboxing or mma is what i'm asking <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, I think MMA, you know, is MMA, I think not right now is the bigger combat sport in the world. And there's, um, I, I'm still very young. I don't have that much fight, you know, I just have, I think, 11 fights in MMA. So I think I still got a lot to improve. And I think I can get like bigger challenges in MMA in the future. Yeah, uh, no, that's absolutely reasonable, but you're going to be fighting Jonathan Hegarty, the Muay Thai champion in a kickboxing match here. Now, you've trained tons of Muay Thai in your career. You lived at uh, Tiger Muay Thai there in Bangkok. What kind of opportunities do you see in this matchup? What are you expecting out of this matchup? This is a great matchup. You know, he's been around in one championship size. They start with the kickboxing and Muay Thai. And he got a big name behind him, you know, and that's what makes this fight exciting. He got a lot of fans. A lot of people cheer against me, and that's kind of like as a it feels like a motivation for me. And be able to become a true sports world champion and beat a guy like him is going to be even better. No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, Hiroki Akimoto, the former champion, is still floating around. How do you square up a matchup against Hiroki Akimoto? That would be a really good matchup. You know, he got a very aggressive style, like pure kickboxing. And I think me and him would be a very exciting match for sure. Man, I would love to see it. That would be an amazing one. Now, I know that you've spent some time training at Tiger Muay Thai. Stop me when I'm wrong, but Tiger Muay Thai is kind of known for a great spot to go party. Am I right or wrong? Or can you not talk about it on air? For, you mean the gym or for party or Puke in general? Uh, let's say the gym and, well, I guess both really. But tell us all about it. What are you doing there in Thailand? Um, I think... Puke, yes, there's a lot of like place to party, but Tiger is more like a, a training gym. I mean, it's a very big gym, so if you come here, you gonna, you're gonna meet a lot of people. Like, there's a lot of people from a lot of different countries. Like in high season, you get 700 people a day, so you can like if you come to try to meet girls, yes, you're gonna meet girls. <laughs> For me, it's more. Uh, a training gym. I I come to train. I've been here for six years, so I already know everybody. So for me, it's only business and Tiger. Man, absolutely awesome! I'm so excited for this matchup against Jonathan Haggerty. What is your official prediction for the end of the fight? Are you expecting a knockout? Are you expecting a TKO? Do you think it'll go to the judges' scorecards? I think I'm gonna be able to stop him inside of five rounds. 
Man, could you imagine Fabrizio Andrade, two sport world champion, the face of one championship? What does that sentence mean to you when you hear that back? Feels right. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely awesome man all right let's switch gears a little bit now you were playing call of duty a few years ago are you still playing call of duty or what are you playing now oh man i stopped but uh yeah i really enjoy that i just haven't had uh enough time to get into it but i really enjoy to play call of duty man it's it's addicting especially the one that was on your phone where like you could just spend hours and hours like i was not doing work because of how much i was enjoying <laughs> call of duty right <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's good to train your reactions too, you know, because you got to see people really fast and kill them, you know, so it's a good reaction training as well. <laughs> Man, I, yeah, a good reaction training. That's why you're playing Call of Duty for the fight game, right? <laughs> yeah, and Dimitri Johnson, you know, he plays a lot, man. I was going to say, why don't you and him try to set something up? He's like out here making money on his channel, being a big gamer. You guys should play against each other. That's true. We should talk about that. Man, and, and I know he's a fan of yours as well. He said you have some absolutely brilliant striking. Like when you hear Demetrius Johnson offering you compliments, that must mean a lot here coming from him, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like um, even when he mentioned me on Joe Rogan podcast and all this is was really awesome. You know, to see that guys like like him that uh, I, has been around for so long, has such a big name, has done like so many things for this sport, you know. I've been following him for a long time and when I heard like he was talking like good things about me was was very very nice you no know, makes me really happy. Oh, man, I love to hear it. Now I've had a, a, quite a few Brazilian fighters on the show and I always like to ask about music. So I've got some good recommendations like Rashiona's MCs, but someone has also recommended Foro music to me. You, can you tell us a little bit about Foro music? Foro music. Yeah, that's, yeah, that that's like uh more from from the the place that I live, you know, for uh, Fortaleza, we like for it's more like uh, uh, dancing music, you know. All right, yeah, yeah. Someone said if you have a girl over, that's the right music. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. Even even if you know how to dance, it's easier for you to get girls as well in my city. <laughs> yeah, this is good. This is great. Uh, also, a lot of Brazilian fighters got into fighting through Dragon Ball Z. Do you, can you relate to that? Was there a cartoon that you loved? Is Dragon Ball Z on the radar? What do you think? I, I think everybody in Brazil, I, I mean, at least for me, like on my time, I was I used to finish school and I, I used to go home like as fast as I could because Dragon Ball Z was like right after school, you know, so I had to go home and watch that. That was the ex most excited thing of the day, I think, was watch Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Man, that is absolutely awesome. And it's like a fight, like there's four episodes of training, you know, that's the training, and then you finally get the fight in the end. It's just like MMA, right? Yeah, man, and there was like uh, so much emotions, you know, and hard fights. Uh, that was awesome. Dragon Ball Z was awesome. I watch everything. I watch even after uh, I used to watch like uh, online. I watch old Dragon Balls, the movies. I watch everything. <laughs> and it is absolutely awesome. Now, who do you think was more influential for your fighting career? I know a big inspiration for you was Jose Aldo, but do you think Goku was more influential for your fighting career? <laughs> <laughs> Goku. Goku is, I mean, he, he was uh, influenced for everybody, man. Everybody who watched that, that it was like, it's impossible to don't get inspired by him. <laughs> hey, great to hear. Now, how did you actually get started in the sport? Where does your origin story begin? Who are some of the fighters that you looked up to as inspirations? Um, on my time, when I started to, to train and fighting, um, I used to watch a lot of, like, Hamon Deckers because he was like a good striker in, in, and he was like the first foreigner to come to Thailand so I used to watch a lot of his fights wow. and when um, UFC started to explode then I started to watch like uh, Anderson Silva, Vito Belfort and Jose Aldo was like those guys that was kind of like famous in Brazil at that time. But Hamon Deckers was one of the first guys that, that I started to watch. Man, Deckers, like, changed the game. He took this Dutch-style kickboxing and took it into Muay Thai and almost changed what, how we talk about and think about Muay Thai. Like, like Deckers is, is just such a legend, isn't he? 
Yeah, and his style was just like very aggressive, you know. And he didn't, he was just like uh, wild, you know. He didn't care about the elbows, he would get caught, and he was just like, you just want to kill everybody, you know. And I kind of like, I, want, I like the style, you know. It's, uh, yeah, I want to fight like this, you know. I actually probably going to watch some of his videos after this. Yeah. <laughs> Man, absolutely awesome. All right, we are just running out of time here, so I got two more questions for you. But if you look into the future, how do you envision yourself looking at five years from now and 10 years from now? Well, I, I envision myself doing something that uh, is kind of like what I'm doing now, you know, I become two sports world champion and crossing pro MMA. And uh, it's something that no the male athlete has done in one yet. So I'm doing that. I already put my name like out there in the history for to for all the fighters to try to beat that. So looking like five years, ten years, I want to keep like building my name and doing like defending my belts and winning new belts. You know, maybe crossing for boxing as well. That's something that uh, I've always uh, been interested in. Is I got some boxing fights, so maybe get a, a third title in a boxing fight as well. And from five, ten years, I want to be like, do something that uh, very hard that uh, many people are going to say, whoa, this is really hard to beat, you know? Uh, absolutely amazing. Now, you were looking up to people like Anderson Silva, Jose Aldo, and Vitor Belfort. Now there are a lot of people who are looking up to you in the same way. How, what advice would you pass on to these people who are now looking up to you as an inspiration? Man, my advice is like... Uh, uh, Find an uh, objective in life, you know, and work hard and never give up, you know, because this has been, um, there's been like a big, uh, big thing in my life is to always work hard and believe in myself and believe that things going to work out because from where I come from, like I come from nothing, you know, and it's been a very hard journey, but it finally paid off, you know, I got here and then now I've, I'm finally like really realizing like everything that uh, one day I just dream of. So I think if you have a dream, if you know what you want, you believe in yourself and you don't give up when things get hard, things gonna happen. Things are going to happen. And look at you now. It's absolutely amazing to see. Now, let me get to this readout and then I'll give you the last word here. But he is the MMA bantamweight world champion competing for the kickboxing title at one fight night 16 on November the 3rd. He is going for the kickboxing title against the Muay Thai King, Jonathan Hagerty. Fabricio Andrade, I hugely appreciate your time. And last word goes to you. Talk us on out of here. Shout out who you need to shout out. Thank who you need to thank. All that good, good stuff, sir. I want to thank you everybody who has been supporting me, you know, all my fans around the world and my fans in Brazil as well. Everybody who supports me to this journey and I hope everybody turn in to watch this fight and I promise I'm going to make it as excited as it gets for everybody to who come to watch it. Cannot wait. Best of luck in the match, sir. Thank you.